four chapters from Answered Prayers were published in Esquire. After reading my story, Unspoiled Monsters, Tennessee was furious with my model for Mr. Wallace, one of the clients of a cowboy service. He is not so much interested in sex as he is in hiring someone to walk his English bulldog. Wallace is described as a chunky, paunchy, booze-puffed runt with a play mustache glued above laconic lips, who has a corn pone voice. Here's a dumpy little guy with a dramatic mind who, like one of his own adrift heroines, seeks attention and sympathy by serving up half-believed lies to total strangers. Capote's a liar, and everyone knows he is. I am inclined to alter and over-elaborate. Myself, I just call it making something come alive. In other words, a form of art. Art and truth are not necessarily compatible bedfellows. Well, there is a sense in which all creative work, all fiction, is imagination. But that imagination is not the same as bitchery and lying. I can't find any excuse for it. My entire book is gossip. I don't deny that for an instant. All literature is gossip. What in God's green earth is Anna Karenina, or War and Peace, or Madame Bovary, if not gossip? Or Proust? Marcel Proust, for instance. All his characters were taken from life, but I don't think any of them were drawn maliciously. I don't think bitchery is the most attractive element in human character, but bitchery is beginning to be a very strong selling commodity in writing. I am not Proust. I am not as intelligent or as educated as he was. I am not as sensitive in various ways, but my eye is every bit as good as his, every bit. I see everything, and I only wrote half of what I saw. I can't think of anything except a great unhappiness in a man's nature could make him try to inflict wounds of that sort upon other people. One must try to go forward in this world without trampling on other beings as we go, if we can help it.